Today we stand together on this special country and that share the respect to each other's cultures and heritage. In recognizing and celebrating our shared history, we all have something to gain. In traditional society of the Kulin people, we were committed to the maintenance of our society by valuing the, trend, the, the importance of learning, showing respect, celebrating life, and respecting sacred ground. The importance of learning, it was a transmission of knowledge and understanding that ensured our culture survive. This commitment to learning has been a part of every generation since time began. It's one of the reasons why we are still strong today. Showing respect. In our traditions, visitors were always welcome. But they were required to show respects to the laws of this country. This is the same way we share respect for the, each other's diversity, culture, or religious or spiritual beliefs today. <coughs> and it is about a celebration, this coming together for this inaugural presentation of sharing of stories. And it is about sharing stories. The celebration of life, the arrival of new children, the coming of our six seasons, the visiting of the neighboring clan, <coughs> was an important part of our traditional life. And today Melbourne not only represents one of the most important places for the celebration of contemporary Indigenous arts and culture, it also prides itself on the arts and culture of our multicultural and global society. Respecting sacred ground. We should all acknowledge the sacred ground on which we stand. Melbourne today is a host to many people from many different nations, and we still call upon them to continue the respect of sacred ground by understanding the history and the heritage of Melbourne's first people of the Kulin Nation. And what we celebrate today through this coming together is the ongoing commitment to the spirit of generosity which remains an important part of Melbourne's culture. And today it, is my, today it is my hope that we can all take pride in our shared history and celebrate the strength of this great nation of ours. And according to our traditions, our lands will always be protected by our creator, Bunjil, who travels as an eagle, and by a lion who protects our waterways travels as a crow. Bundle taught us to always welcome guests, but he required us to ask all visitors to make a number of promises. One, not to harm the lands and waters, and not harm the children of Bundle. And this commitment is made through an exchange of a small bow dipped in the water of the land. So once again, Wamajika, Marabikbi, Bunrong, Nanda, Barabdan, Aka, Willam. I know you're all a diverse group of people that bring your own languages and cultures and customs. But when we go into other people's country, the first thing we learn is how do we get welcomed in. So one of the words I'd like you to all say, maybe this is the way I'm going to change Melbourne. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to all say, Womanjika. Womanjika. You have just articulated 2,000 generations of my ancestors' language to the word Wabajika. So this is a language that the Kulin people speak. So every different clan groups, there's probably 45 different groups in Victoria. They have different welcoming ceremonies. So that's going to be a journey, isn't it? So if you look around Australia, it's bigger again. So it's just like Europe. The difference is when we go into someone else's country, it's about the respect that we show to those people and their customs and their laws, just the same as what we have. We might be a minority within our own, in our own lands, but we still ask and command the rights to be given, a voice to be asked 
the Women's Multicultural Commission. That's what hosting this. It's about the strengthening of our wonderful communities and the diversity. Because uh, I grew up in the, I grew up in the very early when after the war when a lot of the migrants came into our country and they brought amazing food. <laughs> they brought amazing diversity and cultures. And this is the continuance. So I grew up in a very strong connection to a lot of people. We, we had something in common. They were marginalised. We were already marginalised, so we came together. Because we had the same colour. So it was interesting how our world changes, but we're still on the margin, the fringe. So I want to welcome you all here today, and I wish you all the success because you bring a whole different new story to this beautiful country of ours. Woman. a short video message from Mr. Amir Bashir, Director of the Diaspora for the African Union. Representing the African Diplomatic Corps. 
Professor Petien Abe, where is she? Professor Petien Abe, who is all the way from Ethiopia giving one of the keynote speeches this morning. Thank you for being with us. <laughs> Ms. Wanita Agar, she wrote to me last night because her flight was delayed on the east coast of Los Angeles and she was supposed to be arriving this morning at the airport, so she's somewhere not trying to get her separated, but has, she's giving a keynote speech tomorrow, and she's one of the women who has worked with NASA, and if you know the stories of hidden figures, I think it's important to listen to what it's at tomorrow morning. And we've got Adriana Vito from France. Adriana, where are you? A young woman born and bred in Paris, and we know, can you just stand up, please? Yeah, born and bred, raised in Paris, for my grandchildren. I went to an early university and you know, traveling all the way from France to join us because I think the message you have, especially for our youth, and the parallels that they exist with them is something that we really appreciate. Uh, Professor all, uh, Paul E.G. Uh, Miss Helen Kapalas is not here, but we, we have quite a few commissioners here. And my brother, Mr. Sise Dinko, we've got Sonia here, Shrini is here, and we've also got uh, <coughs> Commissioner Tebi. So we've got a, a, another four commissioners here, but Helen is not able to be with us this morning. She was supposed to be speaking, but it was a last minute thing, and they called me this morning. So she said, thank you for stepping in, and all the other commissioners who are here with us. Mr. Joe Pinto, who is the chairperson of the Federation of Ethnic Community Councils of Australia. Miss Irene Buzo. Uh, Father Bob is right here with us. We've got Has uh, Mustafa, former commissioner. We've got a very, very strong supporter of the African community in the name of Mr. Steve Walsh from Maurice Blackburn, chairman of Maurice Blackburn Australia, who is here with us. Ms. Angela Vance from Women Federation for World Peace that I've been uh, patron for the last few years. So um, most of you in this room, thank you, Di Fleming for making it tonight, uh, uh, this morning. I could go through the room and I could acknowledge almost everybody and come from the Asylum Seeker uh, uh, Resource Center, who is also here with us. Um, Councillor Catherine Cummings and Ms. Jill Morgan from Multicultural Arts Victoria. Many of you, if I've not mentioned to you, you're still very important and thank you for being here this morning. It is my honor to welcome all of you as we embark on a journey that only seven months ago, it was only a vision. The diversity of African women here and in the diaspora is something that we want to celebrate and in line with this summit's uh, theme of celebrating African women, their voices, in the African Union's decade of the African woman. So I don't know if many people know that, but this decade is the decade of the African woman, and last year was the, de uh, was the year of human rights in Africa, with particular focus to women's rights, because African Union came to the conclusion, one of the things that they aim to achieve in the next four years is silencing the bonds by 2020, which is part of Agenda 2063, something I'm happy to share with people. Agenda 2063 is the vision that Organization. Until 2013, they looked back and said, what did we achieve in the last 50 years? It was decolonization. Therefore, from 2013 to 2063, what is the vision? And that is where Agenda 2063 came in. And Agenda 2063 was the vision of a very wonderful woman in the name of uh, the first African Union chair was a woman by the name of uh, Dr. Uh, Zuma. And I think her vision is something that we are here to celebrate because she really brought the voice of the women there. Not that the men did not have the voice, but having her there as a woman really changed a lot of things. In the diaspora society, we believe that the traditional extended family and societal structures are often absent. Thus, the traditional networks are non-existent for women trying to make a new life in a new country and in a land of opportunities like Australia. At this summit, we aim to create the opportunities for those women to create networks between themselves, organizations, and institutions. One of the things is that you have to learn about Africa from other people or you have to educate yourself. When I went to school, I learned European history. I learned how to draw the maps of Norway. I learned how to draw the maps of Sweden. I learned farming in Australia. I did not learn about Ghana and Nigeria. So, but as an adult, I realized the importance of those countries and the importance to it, um, why I should learn that. So I encourage other people to learn about Africa because I think it is important that we know our own identity. 
the roles of African women <coughs> in the family and in shaping the behaviors of their children remain critical to ensuring the success of these children at school and later in society as full citizens. We know the first five years of life are very critical. Mothers continue to play a significant role in their children's lives at that age. I dare say that the African mother remains the primary caregiver within the family unit. I think I'll be guilty. I think that it might be very true in my case because Dr. Watts was he in here. Chris does a lot of that in our family, so I need to acknowledge that. This has pros and cons. Regardless, it is important that the time in the child's life at this age is really critical. Thus, these women and mothers need to be supported and support each other. Those in professional occupations often feel isolated and alone and invisible, even though we are visible migrants. They may be the only black person or African person in their area of work, in their department, and in some cases, organizations and institutions, role models that our children can see themselves are, are very few. This invisible, yet visible group of invincible women needs celebrating. Over the next two days, Women and men from various walks of life will exchange ideas, support each other, identify opportunities, and celebrate what you know what uh, many of our women have achieved. And we did that very purposefully because we decided to move away from the deficit model of that African people are victims. Because I think we, most of us are very, very empowered. And I just think it is about having agency in order to share your ideas and be able to perform. And I think this is an example where the Vice Chancellor of Victoria University, the Victorian government, Victorian Multicultural Commission, and other areas have provided that agency and that platform for us to be able to share and exchange ideas with everybody. This global summit, also a cross-cutting event, would provide a platform for all of us to come together, exchange ideas, highlight the strengths of those women as leaders, their aspirations as professionals, <coughs> their roles as parents, and keepers of culture. It would create opportunities for dialogue, highlight the challenges these women face as citizens, and provide strategies to enable them to meet their full potential. Many topics will be discussed under the three main themes of power, finance, and leadership over the next two days. This summit will provide valuable information to those who work with African women, a great opportunity to meet and network with fellow women on an international stage with outcomes to be produced and circulated. We hope to replicate this here in Australia and in other places around the globe and in the future. I think I already promised somebody in Brisbane because they already asked me. So I'm already making promises because, but for sure we're going to continue this dialogue. I would like to use this opportunity to thank every one of you who committed your time to be here today with us. And as I said before, special thanks to my Vice Chancellor, Professor Dawkins, who saw this importance, saw the importance of this right from the beginning, has supported us throughout the process, including co-sponsoring the summit. Special thanks to the Office for Women and the Minister for Women, the Honorable Fiona Richardson, for supporting the initiative. And Marsha Thompson will be speaking uh, later tomorrow afternoon and closing the summit on behalf of the minister. Um, so there are many organizations who kindly sponsor their staff and the students to be here with us and community leaders who ensure we reach the diversity of women, those working hard at the grassroots. Ms. Georgie Crozier, MLC, has been very supportive of this initiative in her role as the Shadow Minister for Women, and she will be speaking this afternoon. The Youth Committee was instrumental in putting this summit together. And you know, I, you are the future, and we are very proud. And I can confidently say the future is very bright with what I saw as we prepared for the summit. Finally, we would like to thank and extend our sincere gratitude to the exhibitors that are listed in this booklet, please. Uh, Quacha Fashion Nutrimetrics Australia. Please don't leave without getting your gift from Nutrimetrics. Uh, Bags of Hope. And the bags of coal are produced to support uh, homeless people. And um, we've got a stall out there, so please go and learn more about the bags of coal. Uh, Breast Cream Victoria, who have also kindly supported us. Hepatitis Victoria, Office for Women, and of course, Victoria University. 
To the men and women who have worked with us, I want to say thank you. To our international speakers, Prof uh, Professor Abe, Ms. Wanata Agar, Ms. Adriana Bito, thank you and we look forward to welcoming you all again here in the future. And I just want to also acknowledge a very important person, Catherine Scott from Ames Australia, for the work that they do in the community, but also for uh, being the CEO of a very important organization that I'm also affiliated with as well. So can I just say thank you all for being here today. Thank you for making the time and I hope you're going to enjoy the next two days. Make this summit your own. It is an idea that a few of us came up with, but I think we want to make, we want you people to embrace it and make it your own. So thank you and thank you to a very good friend in the name of Pastor Thompson who kindly came this morning as well. Thank you. I have only one thing to add to that. That's my mom. That <laughs> Sometimes I'm not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, but yeah, feeling very, very privileged not only to see so many inspiring women here today, but that I have one um, with me all the time, behind me, um, supporting me as well. So um, I'm so grateful for you. Yeah. introduce our next exceptional um, speaker and supporter. I just have a few announcements to make and I would like to inform everybody that the summit and the program is being recorded in its entirety and there are being photographs, there are, there are lots of photographers and photographers and there will be photographs taken. If you are uncomfortable with that or would not like to have your photograph taken, please go to the front desk and let um, one of the lovely ladies in this beautiful outfit know um, and they will organize or they will make sure that the photographers are made aware of your request. We are incredibly, incredibly happy, I'm just going to reiterate that, to have the support of Victoria University with us, um, to, who has basically from the beginning supported the, the putting on of this amazing event. So I would take great pleasure in welcoming Victoria University's Vice Chancellor, Professor Peter Wilkins, to the podium. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Shady Rose, and um, you can indeed be very proud of your, your mother. And uh, I'd like to begin by thanking Mimi for her leadership in pulling together uh, and leading the development of this summit. So please join me in thanking Mimi for her leadership. And uh, it is wonderful to be with you all here this morning, and Victoria University is very proud of it to be the host for this inaugural African Diaspora Women Summit. And um, look, I do want to begin by thanking Auntie Caroline Briggs for the welcome to the country and also giving my acknowledgement that we are on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri and Boonwurrung tribes of the Kulin Nation and pay my respects to their, to their elders and families. I'd also like to acknowledge the presence of a, of, a, of a large number of distinguished guests, and, and I can't mention all, but I do particularly want to acknowledge the presence of the Honourable Bruce Atkinson, President of the Legislative Council of the Victorian Parliament. Great to have you with us here this morning, and we know that, that you are very, uh, very committed to the importance of Australia's relationship with Africa and the As African diaspora. Uh, other members of Parliament are joining us for this conference, the African <coughs> Diplomatic Corps, uh, the, um, the ethnic communities, uh, councils, uh, many distinguished speakers including from overseas, we've heard about our distinguished speaker from, from Ethiopia, another one from France, it's a wonderful, a wonderful list of speakers that we have at this summit. My colleagues from Victoria University, everyone here, especially of course the African diaspora women, but all other guests, uh, you are extremely welcome to Victoria University, we're very proud to be hosting uh, this event, along with the African Union and the Victorian State Government. As Mimi said, this initiative was born out of the need for a platform for African women to come together and lead their own agenda, with the support of others, irrespective of gender or background. Service providers, professionals, NGOs, educators, business leaders, entrepreneurs in the diaspora, uh, Australia, Asia, Pacific, Europe, the Americas, <coughs> and Africa have come together to share their experiences, focusing on the African women and female <coughs> child. We're here today because Dr. Mimi Watts engaged the African Union and members of the African community 
service providers and government to decide uh, what a good summit for African women would look like and what it should include. And this summit gives you the opportunity to hear from African diaspora women as well as uh, esteemed, esteemed people who are leaders, community leaders, whether it be the Mayor of Mabadon, whether it be a number of members of Parliament, there's a fantastic group of speakers to work together uh, on, on, the, uh, on the issues for African diaspora women. And I think the organisers have done a tremendous job. You've heard that uh, this decade is the decade of the African woman, as declared by the African Union. And uh, but I do want, from Victoria University's point of view, to make a special point of saying why this is of particular importance to me as the Vice Chancellor of Victoria University, because we have such a strongly emerging body of African students at Victoria University. There's also many academic staff at Victoria University with African ancestry, with a focus on sub-Saharan African women. And I'm reliably informed that we have approaching 2,000 students studying here at Victoria University who were born in Africa. And so it is wonderful to be a university based in Western Melbourne with so many uh, students of African origin. And that's a, a particular reason why I'm delighted that we are hosting this summit. We are proud of a deep connection to our community in our heartland where, embed, where we are embedding ourselves as an integral part of this growing area. And we have a responsibility to work with our local community and work towards social cohesion, inclusivity and belonging. There are many opportunities for African women in education and employment, but there are also many challenges that they face in employment, equal opportunity and discrimination. At Victoria University, we call ourselves the University of Opportunity and Success. We're devoted to providing outstanding opportunities for students and partners from many diverse backgrounds, of which African backgrounds is one of the most important, and also ensuring that our students and the partners we work with are successful. Uh, and so, as the University of Opportunity and Success, we are truly delighted. It is a highly culturally diverse university. Cultural diversity is part of our DNA. To be, uh, to be hosting this uh, summit. We work with the Born of African Communities Network uh, and sent Acre to educate families in four African languages about study options for African students. I do want to, uh, I might just mention that last week, uh, I mentioned we've got almost 2,000 students. Last week I had pleasure in sitting down for afternoon tea with one of our PhD students, Malki Say. Malki was born in Somalia and arrived in Australia in 1992. She's currently studying her Doctor of Philosophy in Nursing and Midwifery. Uh, she attempted a number of certificate courses and ended up doing uh, a, um, a science alternative entry program in 2006 from which she transitioned into the Bachelor of Science Biomedical Science in 2007. At times her studies were interrupted and external factors sometimes took precedence. And although it took a bit longer, she remained dedicated to her undergraduate degree and eventually graduated in 2012. Volky then decided to continue her journey at BU and, was, and uh, has developed a new pathway to a Doctor of Philosophy, Doctor of Philosophy in Nursing and Midwifery, which is an alternative pathway to a PhD for applicants who have not had previous research training uh, and or experience. She took advantage of this opportunity and is doing wonderfully in her PhD studies and is the recent recipient of a prestigious award, uh, the, uh, the Graduate Women's Victoria Scholarship, which was recently presented. So please, congratulations. <laughs> and through Malky's dedication to her education, her community and her resilience that she received this scholarship. And this is just one success story of many students coming to Victoria University from very diverse backgrounds, as I say, many from African backgrounds who go on to be so successful and we're very proud of Mulkey and others who are achieving that success and we look forward to many more successful examples. So thank you all for your participation in this summit and in contributing to the conversations, the very important conversations around sharing experiences, strategies and opportunities with and for African women <coughs> and children in a range of different areas. I mentioned the opportunities and challenges for African women there is so much for myself and others to learn through this summit today and tomorrow that the learning begins. Thank you and welcome. Thank you so much for that.
Now, the African Union has played a key role in supporting the summit to be realized here today. Unfortunately, as the sitting time for the African Union was shifted to this month, our representative, representative delegates could not be here. However, I would like to invite again to the podium Dr. Mimi to read the message to, that, that we would like to share to, with all of us here today. Thank you so much. Please give a vote. Yeah, so, uh, thanks again for inviting me today. So when we, sh uh, we we had the idea of the summit, the first people that we contacted was the African Union. And one of the members of the African Union has actually been very instrumental in guiding and working with the committee, whom I really want to acknowledge, and I was, I'll ask them to stand up at the end of this message. So I'm reading a message by the team from Iman Key, African Union Diaspora Office. And for people who don't know, the African, Africa is divided into five regions, North, East, South, West, and Central. The people that went out from the transatlantic slave trade till now, us, we are members of the SIT region. So, and there is an office dedicated for members of the SIT region, which is the diaspora. So this is from the diaspora office. There is a discourse developing in many of the migrant receiving countries, where immigrants of, or new settlers who I refer to as a diaspora are not depict, uh, depicted in the most positive light. I understand that this discourse is rooted in the fear of the other, and it takes an amalgam of patience, tolerance, and love to accept and understand those who are different than you. And those differences are simple. It is those of language, race, tradition, culture, religion, and often class. This discourse forgets why migration was venerated at the first place, and instead puts the honors on the diaspora to prove themselves worthy by succeeding to integrate. <coughs> now, integrating itself is an enriching two-way process. On the one hand, it allows the diaspora to develop and grow into transnational personalities, which has proven to help both home country, embarked destination, and country <coughs> of origin. And on the other hand, it requires the Australian community to open their heart, hear the stories of the diaspora, understand and internalize it. Only then will the process of integration be complete and successful. The challenge is that stories of the diaspora are often not as, an inclu as inclusive as we hope for them to be. In 2017, I and many of those working with diaspora still lament the fact that women and their stories are still missing. Women are still missing on the table, whether those tables are those of community meetings, policy spaces, or even leadership. And here is where the African Diaspora Women's Summit comes in at such an important time, globally, within the diaspora space, and in Australia. The summit will help bridge a gap and play the much needed role of the convener. The, the summit will allow us to hear the stories of women from the different walks of life, help us understand how they challenge and continue to challenge traditions and cultures that are harmful, how they were empowered, how they are held back, how they raise children, and how they create and grew communities. These stories and this inspiring summit will provide a fresh impetus that will allow us to start to patch up, understand, and create comprehensive knowledge on the diaspora and allow us to formulate and create solutions that way. It is such summits and spaces that empower women to claim their rightful places on the table. Congratulations to Dr. Mimi Watts and to everyone who supported this <laughs> initiative on putting together hope and inspiration packaged into an African Diaspora Women's Summit. So thank you for listening and that is the message of the team from Iman Key from the African Union. Thank you. I would like to welcome to the podium President of the Legislative Council, Honorable Bruce Atkinson. Ladies and gentlemen, what a great pleasure it is to be here today with you at this summit, which I think is going to be an extraordinarily successful event and a milestone in terms of the African diaspora experience here in Australia. Can I respond 
to the wealth of the country on your behalf and say thank you to Aunty Caroline Briggs for that welcome. And can I join with the other speakers who will no doubt along the way pay their respects to the elders past and present of our First Peoples of Victoria and Australia. You know, I sometimes say at events, Australia is not your home. Australia is not my home. Australia is our home. It's a very different concept because it's a concept that applies responsibilities to each of us. Responsibilities to work together for a better future. Responsibilities to care for those who are less privileged in our community, those who need a helping hand. And it also encompasses our aspiration to work together and do wonderful things. And there's no doubt already Australia is a very significant contributor to the global community in terms of what it does in its contribution. Indeed, some of you might have heard a phone erupt. That was my phone in the front row because I was looking up at your Surf Foundation and you had a video on it. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst the phone's on silent, videos override the silence. Do you know, I was at a Cambodian function the other night and I mentioned to them an inspiring young woman who is a PhD scholar from Monash University, a Dr. Kong. And she came up with a phrase that I first came across last year at a Cambodian exhibition at the Immigration Museum not far from here. And that phrase was, don't tell me the sky's the limit when there are footsteps on the moon. <laughs> An inspirational phrase. She would urge me, because I met her on Friday night, I've been quoting her a little bit, different speeches, and I met her the other night, which was a great privilege. Very modest lady, she says, oh, you need to give some credit to my lecturer as well, because he helped me in the formation of the statement. But at any rate, one of the fantastic things for members of Parliament is that we meet so many inspirational people. It's one of the things that drives us more than anything else, because those inspirational people sometimes are celebrities. I've met two people from royal family lineages in the last couple of weeks. They were impressive. But just as impressive, the people in the community doing small things, taking small footsteps to make the world a better place. In a broader community sense, it can be somebody who's been a school crossing supervisor for 15 or 20 years. It can be somebody who works in a canteen every week as a volunteer at a football club. <coughs> it can be somebody delivering meals on wheels. They are all inspirational people. And in this community, I find this diverse community, I also find inspiration. I'm not going to dwell on Mimi Watts because I think she's going to get mentioned many times throughout this conference. But what a great job she has done. And she talked to me very early in the piece about her thoughts of what could be done if we brought women together in a summit such as this. She's achieved a lot already just getting this many people, including our international and interstate visitors to whom I extend a very warm welcome to the world's most livable city, six years in a row. And the frightening thing about that is we have trepidation every time the award comes out. <laughs> because one year on someone's watch, we're not going to make it. <laughs> but at any rate, um, 
we welcome you to the city and hope that your experience here today and tomorrow and hopefully you will have some further time here will be a very positive one and one that will give you some great memories. The other person though who inspires me a great deal is Selva. I now count Selva as a friend of mine. Selva works with young people who've transgressed and have come into the justice system. She supports them. She helps the justice system interpret some and understand some of their needs and some of the things that might have contributed to that offending. And most importantly, she negotiates on the basis of other outcomes, better outcomes for the community, better outcomes for the individual, if in fact the courts consider some of the matters that she brings to them. A few weeks ago I went to the launch of a basketball club, the Black Rhinos. Rhinos are to some extent a threatened species because of the poachers. And the name was deliberately chosen because of the concerns of young people who may have lost their way. I think it started off with about 20 kids playing basketball at Dandenong. <coughs> Jumped to about 40 kids within a couple of weeks. 60 kids within a couple more weeks. So now it's 70 <coughs> kids plus. And indeed, Selva tells me this morning that she's been asked to try and reach into the prison system to work with some of the young lads from an African background and try and encourage them through the sort of Black Rhinos program to see that they have a future. Another person that I find quite inspiring in the audience today amongst so many distinguished guests and can I take the opportunity of picking up what I understand is a very popular and I think a very pragmatic African approach to the recognition of dignitaries and that is to say all protocols observed. <laughs> I love it and certainly shortened speeches. But Di Fleming from Ducer Foundation was, and that's why I quickly tried to just check up on the latest on Ducer Foundation, but I couldn't endure the video, sorry. Um, but again, a woman who is ensuring that connections back into Africa and the role that Australia and Victoria might play in building a stronger relationship with the countries of your ancestors, of your forefathers, countries that many of you left to make a better life here in Australia, but never, never left behind the ties that are so crucial to us all in terms of friends and kin. But the work that Jusair is doing in the education space is important. There are so many other people in this room who are contributing, many of whose stories I have no idea about. But I know that were I to spend time with each of you, I would draw inspiration from you. Importantly, I would draw ideas from you, and that's what this summit is all about. It's about dialogue. It's not just about speeches from old politicians. <laughs> It's about exploring opportunities. It's about touching on issues that are important and that perhaps too often we don't address fully. Issues of family violence. Issues of unemployment and the overrepresentation of young African people in some of those unemployment statistics. Issues that you share with the broader community in terms of housing affordability and cost of living. 
issues of some prejudice. Even in this state, which we regard as an exemplar for our multicultural communities, that is led by some wonderful people, including commissioners such as Mimi Watts, and other commissioners who are here with us today, demonstrating their commitment to the diverse African communities that have chosen to make Victoria home and who are looking and who are already achieving in advancing this state as much as supporting and advancing their families and also continuing to develop those bridges back to the countries with which they have such a strong association still today through friends and kin. Can I thank you for the privilege of being with you today? Can I wish you well in the summer? I trust that there will be many ideas that will be born from these two days that we can all work on and continuing those inspirational stories. Thank you.